person here in the room nice and close to the microphone for me, please. I have a question for Dr. Eric Peng. So thank you for uh, the very good talk on the peptides. And the question is regarding the innate immunity. Uh, can you give a little bit more elaboration on the design of studies or in vitro and animal studies for investigating this? Um, hello, yeah. So the innate immune responses can be investigated by um, in vitro assays, like I said, or in, uh, in animals. So um, in vitro, you probably can look at some cell-based assays, um, a few that are escaping my head right now, but you can probably look it up. And for whatever design, because for all the assays that are out there, there's not one that's conclusively can give you, um, you know, fin definitive answer to this question. So it is best that you try a few and provide justification why you pick such model. And for whatever um, method you propose, please provide, you know, the like I said, the validation that you have, um, you know, to show that it is responsive or, or not responsive. So both positive and negative control should be included. Uh, for animal studies, um, a few that you can do in mice or um, something even closer. Um, but whatever you propose, again, you know, provide the justification for it. And it, because it's a, it's, it's a, int it's a very, um, how do I should say this? But uh, it's a topic that's also very uh, interesting to us. So if you prefer, you can also submit a meeting request and discuss some of the study designs with us. All right. Next person to mic one, nice and close for me, please. Hi, my name is Su Wang. I'm from the uh, Biobionics. This question is for Dr. Chen. Chen, uh, Chen. okay, Z-H-A-N-G. Z because we have another Dr. Chen, C-H-A-N-G. Uh, my question is related to one of your slides talking about the SS solid state NMA for C-13. And my previous life was uh, an NMR spectroscopist, both in the specialty chemical company and pharmaceutical company. And I used both liquid NMR and solid state NMR. And my experience was, unless it's absolutely necessary, I will not use solid state NMR because the detection, the method is less, pulse sequence is less. And to, to determine the cross-linking also depends on if it is rigid or soft. If it's rigid, then the cross-polarization time should be different. You can pick up a different cross-linking signals. And also based on my past experience, I found if I can find the right solvent and soak the polymer in the solvent for a long time, become a gel state or soften it a little bit, then I can use NMR, liquid NMR technique uh, to handle that. And this way give me a better detection limit because liquid NMR normally has a higher dynamic range. Solid NMR has less linear dynamic range. So could you comment on that? Thanks for the comment. Uh, I totally agree. I mean, um, we are all, uh, working in this field, you know, the uh, liquid uh, solution uh, with MR is certainly uh, in terms of resolution, everything is much better than solid state. Um, say in a specific case, if you can find the solvent, as you said, uh, it will certainly will be better. Um, this case, close LM case, um, I think it's you know, not really soluble in a lot of solvent. So um, it happened to, in that uh, chemical shift, you, you happen to be able to find that, uh, also use the uh, integration to find out how much you know, the certain of the uh, peaks or chemical shift of, you know, from the cross-linking agent. So you can calculate the percentage that way. But I agree, if you have other uh, method of uh, solvent, it's probably better. So to, for the quantitative... And, it, and the rest sorry. of that conversation can be you. excellent during lunch. But I'm going to go ahead and take an online question, if I could, please. This question is for Dr. Peng. I would like to know, 
in case of impurities found in the RLD, how many lots are necessary to be tested in order to prove the level of this impurity? The RLD specification from a COA marketed lot, would that be enough to approve the generic limit? Um, that's, that's a very good question. How many lots do you need? Um, we get that kind of question quite a bit. So in the, the rule of thumb is um, you, know, you should not have anything less than three. But my recommendation is you should do as many as possible to get a, um, you know, it's easier said than done, I heard that. But, um, but it's really, you try to build your case that is, the more lots you investigate, the more of a broader range of uh, understanding of the range of the impurities in, that exists in the RLD. And by doing so, actually benefits your case. If you do find something that, let's say, you know, the RLD has this impurity at 0.6, but you find that you're having at 0.7, perhaps there's not a lot out there from the RLD that can justify your case. So yes, um, you know, three is probably the minimum that you should do, but I would recommend you do more than that, just so that it gives you a better confident understanding of the range that exists in the RLD. Um, I hope that answers the question. All right, and let's go on to microphone number two. Nice and close to the microphone okay. for me, please. Uh, thanks for a lot of, uh, quite a lot of good information for Complex. Uh, my question is to Jan, and uh, this is regarding to characterization of the reference standard. So the complex generics, like you have to reverse engineer to get your API, where you have to characterize the API, RLD API. At this point, depending on the isolation process, like of course, of course that be characterized as much as possible. And then, is there what is the best way to come and talk to the agency saying that is that the first in the place is that characterization is enough, or is there anything we need to do to identify the uh, the RLD reference standard? And what is the best way to approach the, uh, the FDA? Is that the CC is better, or is the pre-NDA pre meeting is the better? If I understand your question correctly, you are asking um, in the cases of uh, uh, APIs that you need to isolate primary reference standard from the ILD, yes. and you want to find out, you know, how to uh, characterize no, those. The, 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 we have characterized the, the reference standard, RLD reference standard. So I want to, because this is very difficult, like you know, APIs, whether I got the right target, which is the reference standard. So I do all the work, and what is the best way I can come and talk to you saying that I got the right or wrong, or like before we invest extra money to make the reference, uh, other uh, X batches or anything. So I want to confirm or get a OK or not OK. So what is the best way to? I think uh, um, if you only have one question, you could potentially, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, you could potentially submit a, co a control correspondence. But if you have a more, you know, more questions, uh, you could also request a, a, a development meeting, pre India development meeting. Right. Sometimes if you put a CC, they said it's a review question, so it's a better to come and talk to us at pre-NDA meeting, pre-NDA meetings? Well, for pre-NDA pre meetings, you need to, you know, provide enough uh, background and, you know, ask a specific okay. question. Yes. Yes. So um, uh, I, I actually touch a little bit, you know, in some cases, uh, you need to um, provide sufficient information, for, in, for example, how you isolate the APIs right. and uh, uh, the, the detailed procedures. And one thing that I also want to emphasize is that um, you want to have data to demonstrate that you have adequate recovery. In other words, you know, sometimes these API, I mean, for peptide, usually it's very straightforward because peptide is well defined, right? But if the API is a mixture and you want to be sure that, you know, during the isolation process, you have adequate recovery so that the, uh, the drug substance that you isolate is really representative of the uh, ID of the drug substance. So um, you, you need to uh, you know, have uh, uh, sufficient information to uh, support all of these. OK. So just follow up. like you know, and, and actually, for the follow up, I'm going to seat you two together during lunch. <laughs> and we're going to move on to the next question in the room, nice and close to the microphone, please. OK. 
Hello. Uh, uh, thank you for the presentations. I have a question related uh, to the peptide uh, draft guidelines uh, for Dr. Peng. Uh, so uh, I have a question in comparison of identification of impurities which are present in the reference listed drug and in generic product. And uh, there is a mention of um, LC uh, MS, high resolution MS uh, identification. So what uh, type of this identification is suitable for impurities comparison. If impurities are present higher than of a point for point, uh, 0 0.1 percent in both in RLD and in generic drug. Not sure. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm okay. a little bit slow right now. But, um, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to understand the question a little bit. Um, so you're asking if you have this impurity that's also that's in both your product and the, the RLD, and this impurity is about 0.1 percent. You said in, in both in RLD and in our, our product. Yes. Right, but the, the the rule is it cannot be more than RLD. So this is where you do okay, your profiling, yeah, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're asking in to what, what extent the mm -hmm. identification needs to be? Yes. Well, we will think the identification will, in this case will mean uh, on a sequence level. The chemical structure level, so you will have to identify the structure or the the, chem, the what's the sequence of this impurity, basically. So, do you think maybe um, higher resolution um, MS could it be possible uh, if we compare uh, impurities by retention and molecular iron obtained for the MS? Would it be this enough? Or oh, I see. Um, because of the article that you mentioned earlier. So oh, uh, for peptides, mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of uh, peptides uh, have the same uh, molecular formula, so just because you have the you know, high resolution MS, you know, just because you have the same molecular formula, it doesn't mean they are the same. And these go back to uh, one of the examples that I talk about. You know, just because they have the same retention time, it doesn't mean that they are indeed the same. It could be diastereomer as an example, you know, or different diastereomer. So, and if they are different diastereomer, it's actually quite challenging because you know the MS data would just not tell you. Um, so you know if if they have a different molecular weight, obviously you know you still need to uh, find out the identity by, for instance, MS MS. You know, but for diastereomers, there are different ways that you can approach them. But in, essentially, you know, you need to have a sufficient data to demonstrate, you know, whether they are indeed the same impurities where they are in fact different impurities because again you know if you think about it in order to justify the um, impurity level um, you really want to find out what they are thank you all right let's sneak in an online question if we could please for dr chang what does same level of degradants as compared to the rld mean for peptides for example how do we compare numbers where we are 0.3% versus 0.5% cons being considered the same? OK, we stumped them. There's so, OK, so yep. I think it's maybe I'll, I'll just answer if, if you have anything to add, Jane, you can come in. But, um, the way I understand same is really you're looking at your, your profile. So yes, in one batch you could have 0.5%. Maybe in another RLD you could this impurity could have you have observed up to like say you know one percent. Then would that be the same? Yes, because your 0.5% is under the one percent in the RLD. So I will say that's fine. So what we're looking at is really the the multiple batches and not just one batch to one batch comparison here. All right, microphone number two, nice close for me, please. Hi, uh, my question is, is both for Dr. Jian Chen and uh, Dr. Pan. So for peptide, if I want to use a synthetic peptide uh, to uh, have a generic product as a recombinant, in this case, I mean, because both of you mentioned uh, compare with the API recovered or extracted from the RLD, 
in this case, because uh, two different uh, approach, so do I still need to compare these two APIs because the impurity profiles could be completely different? Well, obviously, the impurities for, uh, or I should say, process impurities for recombinant uh, APIs uh, would be very different uh, in most of the cases. You know, that's for process impurities. But for the uh, API-related uh, uh, degradant, uh, they should be very similar. So there is still value in comparing the impurity profile because some of the impurities could be uh, degradation uh, impurities. Did I? Yeah, did I yeah. yeah. OK, thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's take another online question. If you have questions in the room, please come on up to the mics online. For Dr. Chang, a biological drug substance was excluded from the scope of your presentation. Are there any specific guidances and or references that can be referred to for characterization and demonstration of sameness for biological DS? Animal sourced. There are available FDA guidances. Uh, uh, there are guidances that you can refer to uh, for a uh, biosimilar product. Okay, next online question, please. For complex drug substances, there are many different characterization methods available. How many of such methods are needed or required for a specific complex substance? And how do we know if they are sufficient to demonstrate API sameness? Uh, I probably first say something. Um, I think it's pretty much product dependent, depending on how complex um, the product is. Um, at least, like physical chemical characterization, like you know, molecular weight distribution, particle size, those kind of a standard things that you probably need to do. But on top of that, like the one I mentioned, uh, structural signature analysis, biological activity evaluation, impurity, depends on the uh, complexity of the product itself. And uh, overall, I think we just want to encourage you use sensitive orthogonal uh, complementary method to demonstrate API. Um, as I mentioned in the talk, it's not like the more the better, but you need to really show the reason why you use that method to characterize your API, to demonstrate API sameness. It's not like data dumping, you just add more data to show it's the same. Okay. All right, last question of the day, or before lunch, right at the microphone, please. Dr. Chang. Dr. Pang, uh, for for uh, presentation and uh, the guidance very clearly reads that uh, impurities that are 0.5 percent or above and different from the RLD process impurities, the path is NDA. Those won't be acceptable as an ANDA. Is is that an absolute policy decision, or uh, regardless of the supportive talks or in silico data? So you're asking about the 0.5% that is new to the generic, is that correct? 0.5% process impurity, different from RLD, okay. more than 0.5%. So yeah, so these are new impurities in the generics, but not found in the RLD. For those impurities, if it's more than 0.5%, our current, under, um, our current thinking is it may require additional studies which are not really suitable for the 505J pathway. Now, however, if you do think you have a case, um, you may submit a meeting request and, and try to discuss that with us. But our current thinking so far is file five J may not be suitable for this kind of impurities. Okay. And based on the question we had, did the panel have anything else they want to add before we wrap it up? Time for lunch. Please help me thank our panel for coming and asking the questions. <laughs>